بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له النعمة وله فضل وله الثناء الحسن والصلوات الله بر الرحيم والملائكة المقربون وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين نسأل الله تبارك وتعالى النية الصالحة والتقرب إليه برحمته I praise Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. I ask Allah to send countless blessings and salutations upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family, his companions, and all those who follow them in excellence until the day of judgment. And we ask Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala to grant us the sincere, pious intention that we intend by these gatherings to draw close to Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, to have a higher status with Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, and to receive his acceptance by the status of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, those angels who are close and all of the pious. Before we continue with this poem, Ya Sabiran Abshir, O one who is steadfast, patient, full of fortitude, receive glad tidings. Imam al-Haddad radiallahu ta'ala anhu, whenever we read his works, we should try to develop a state Reading the works of Imam al-Haddad radiallahu ta'ala anhu are not like reading the works of anyone else. They have a secret for the one who approaches his words with qalbin salim, with a pure heart. It is said that the speech of Imam al-Ghazali, Hujjatul Islam, Rahimahullah, is on the hearts by way of kashf, spiritual unveiling. So whenever you read or you hear Kalam al-Ghazali, the words or the speech of Imam al-Ghazali, you are actually hearing words that are designed to impact the heart. And how is he getting this information? Allah is unveiling secrets to him which reach the heart. And the words of Imam al-Haddad radiallahu ta'ala anhu are a summary of the words of al-Ghazali. So whenever you hear the words of Imam al-Haddad, it contains that unveiled knowledge that impacts the heart and lifts the servants to high levels and stations and degrees of piety. And every time we listen to the words of Imam al-Haddad, even if it's one line, if that meaning hits your heart, it will 
place you in meaning, if not in reality, among the awliya of Allah. Just being to receive a portion of that. So, when you read his works, you should prepare your heart for a journey. And we always try to mention when we talk about Imam al-Haddad. This morning, Sheikh Abdul Karim Hafidhullah Ta'ala mentioned a title of Imam al-Haddad. He said he was known as Haddad al-Kuloob. Haddad al-Kuloob, the heartsmith, as he worded it. In other words, Imam al-Haddad is changing rusty hearts into pure spiritual vessels that would push one's soul to the utmost ranks of piety from his words. So one word from Imam al-Haddad has that ability. One word. So... Every time we hear a word, we should know that there are deep meanings in it that will uplift our spirituality. So now when we're talking about Imam al-Haddad, we're not talking about a person who's bound to the earth. We are talking about a man who even from the intermediate world, from al-Barzakh, the grave, has the ability to take the living by the hand to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and through the Prophet to their Lord. And they have a covenant. And by our hearts, we join that covenant, which is the saved one among us will take his brother or sister by the hand until we are all safe. No one left behind. So it's the heart connection. If that connection is there, then Imam al-Haddad is going to take you by the hand. So let's be in that state. So he said, and there are some lines just to reflect on them, then we'll keep going. Ya sabir and abshir wa bashir men sabar. Oh, patient one, O oh, one of steadfastness, receive glad tidings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned some people who would have glad tidings. And he gave a description of them. And these really are the address of Imam al-Haddad to the common people to bring them to the level of the elite. He's able to speak to the common people and through his words bring them indications that will take them to the level of the elite. As Allah wa ta'ala said, Ala inna awliya Allahi la kawfun alayhim wa la hum yahzanun. Alladheena amanu wa kanu yattakum. Verily, those awliya of Allah, these are those highly righteous, pious people. They don't fear, nor do they grieve. All of us should strive for that. In other words, these are the happiest people in the world. They don't have any fear. They don't grieve. What's behind them, they don't worry about. And what's coming to them, they don't worry about. Why? Because they believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is ma'rifa. They have realization. They know that the reality of everything, al-amru kullahu biyadillah, the entire affair is under the control of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. He is al-mudabbir li jami'il maqluqeen. He is the one who manages and takes care of everything in creation. That's a start. As Allah told us about himself, Afillahi shak, there is no doubt about Allah. So that's a state. Then, they are people who are people of a taqwa. They believe 
and they have a taqwa, which means what? They perform the obligations and they refrain from the prohibitions. And what do they have? Lahumul bushra. They have glad tidings from Allah. Fi dunya wal akhira. In this world and the hereafter, abshir. Because among the stations of wilayah, which are all stations of al yaqeen certainty, is muqam al-sabr, the station of steadfastness, the station of fortitude, the station of patience. So every station on the path of Allah is a station among the stations of al yaqeen and it is mentioned al yaqeen al iman kullu that certainty is all of faith sayyidina ali radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he said if the veil was removed wakaram allahu wajha what veil that veil that blocks us from seeing divine realities. If it was removed, I would not increase in certainty. If it was removed, because for him, and we strive for this, the matters that are unseen have to become realities for us. Alladheena yu'minuna bil ghaib. They have a firm conviction in the unseen matters. They have certainty. And these two stations, the station of certainty, and from it, the station of steadfastness are important stations that we need to strive for. So he's addressing this. And if we reach or we attain that station, there is nothing but glad tidings for us. Because we've become among those pious people who have no fear or no grief. We, we reach that state. And when you reach that state, you become a vehicle to carry others to that state. So he says, وَبَشِّرْ men sabar," And also, you're receiving those glad tidings and you're giving them. But here, all of this is a command from Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Means that we must strive for it. It's not something that's negotiable. A real believer is going to have these qualities as inward states. These are among al wajibatil qalbiyya. These are among those obligations of the heart. It must exist. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran about this station of sabr. He said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu ista'inu bi sabri wa salah inna allaha ma'as sabirin. O you who believe, whenever you hear this expression in the Quran, that's a command. And that means whatever comes after it, you're obligated to put it into practice. And whenever we say put something into practice, don't just think of it outwardly. Think of the inward state. Because whatever Allah, whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a command, there is an inward aspect and an outward aspect. The inward aspect relates to the state of the heart. As the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that there is a piece of flesh in the body. When it is sound, the whole entire body would be sound. And if it is corrupt, if it is off course, unbalanced, not directed towards the objective, Allahu Akbar. not object directed towards the objective, the whole body will be corrupted. And it is the heart. So when we say sabr, don't look firstly outside, look in. What is the state of my heart? 
Where is my heart? In relation to this command. So, if I want to seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I want aun from Allah, I want Allah's help, the first command is to have sabr. In this verse, to have fortitude. And then, following it, with an outward action, a salah. So the prayer itself, which is an obligation, is in need of steadfastness, fortitude in it, for it to be impactful on the heart. Not just I'm going through motions, but actually I have to see the prayer like the pious see the prayer. How do the pious see the prayer? As salah, he a mi'raj al mu'min. Allah. The prayer, it is that heavenly ascension for the believer every time they say Allahu Akbar. And until you reach that state, you must diligently have fortitude and steadfastness and working on yourself inwardly and outwardly till that becomes the joy of your eye. So it's a work inward, then an outward manifestation of an inward reality. And it's training you what? That the unseen, through steadfastness, will be manifest in the seen. It's, it's heart work. And part of making us the best people, the best nation, is that we enjoying in these good qualities on other, others. So I'm not just telling you to do something. What else I'm telling you? Receive glad tidings. What are glad tidings? As-sa'adatul abadiyya fil akhirah. Everlasting felicity as a result of being patient. Having fortitude. You know, the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned that Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala said, I prepared for my righteous servant. Emphasize righteous. Emphasize pious. Don't just say, I'm a servant of Allah. I am a righteous, pious servant of Allah. Because that's a status. Piety. I've prepared for those servants what no eye has ever seen. No ear has ever heard, and no heart of the human being has ever felt. That's the result. That's that joy that we're striving for. And if you get that, that is glad tidings. After which, there is nothing besides being with Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Right? Being with Allah. Then, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned about those people who became leaders. And every single one of us are responsible for somebody. Every single one of us in relation to the one we are responsible for, we are a leader for them. And the leader will guide others by the command of Allah. But what do that leader need? Allah said, وَجَعَوْنَا مِنْهُمْ أَئِمَّةٍ يَهْدُونَ بِأَمْرِنَا لَمَّا صَبَرُوا We made from among them leaders, by our command, the Amrillah. And what did we say? Al Amru Kullahu Lillah. All of the affair, every command belongs to Allah. This is the command. Kun Fayakun. All of these lofty attributes, it is just for Allah to give the order and it's done. And the means that lead to that are there. 
And when you're patient, you have this steadfastness. And patience, I'm going to give you its types so that it's practical. Because you say, being patient, having fortitude, being steadfast, what does that look like? Our great imams, they didn't leave that out. They told us how to actually do it. When we are steadfast, we're going to be leaders that guide others. Right? So there is a cause for Hidayah, which is through patience, perseverance, steadfastness, struggling to Allah wa ta'ala gives you an opening. In other words, you keep knocking the door of steadfastness. And in your mind, you say, I want to be among them. Because these are a people, a group, whoever sits with them, whoever receives a gaze from them, whoever mentions them, they will have no wretchedness ever sitting with them, getting a gaze from them. Looking at them, mentioning them, having them in our hearts will help us attain their lofty characteristics and attributes. Among them, steadfastness. When that is occurring, guidance. Every time we pray, don't we say, al-mustaqim? We're asking for guidance. How we get that? Right there. Steadfastness. By the command of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Imam al-Haddad, he goes on. When you have this characteristic, the glad tidings is going to come how? Bin Nasri. Wal Faraji al Qareeb wal bin Dhafar. By Nasr, by help, support. What support? It is mentioned in the narration from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, As Sabru Amiru Junud al Muhmin. Patience is the leader of the armies or the soldiers of the believer. Patience is the head of the soldiers of the believer. The believer has many weapons. Patience, sabr, tawakkal, reliance, athika billah, Confidence in Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Al Hilm. Forbearance. All of these are the soldiers for you to fight the war against four things. Four things. The war, and I'll start with the most difficult one, is the war against your nafs. Many of us struggle with this battle. But how are we going to overcome the desires and the inclinations of our lower self, our nafs? The sabr. By steadfastness. If you learn to acquire this lofty characteristic, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will support you to overcome your nafs. Now don't look it from your side. Never look at things from your side. The real doer, who Allah. The real doer is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of your actions are majaziyah. They're figurative in reality. They have no real substance. Wallahu khalaqakum. وَمَا تَعْمَلُونَ Allah is the one who created you 
and everything you do. So all the time, whenever you're trying to acquire any lofty characteristic, return to the one who is Al-Wahhab, Al-Manan, Al-Kareem. Allah wa ta'ala is the one who grants that to you, who favors you with it, who's generous to allow you to attain these noble attributes. Even when we're sitting here talking about Imam al-Haddad, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, reading this poem from his diwan. Imam al-Haddad, he has a book. It's his diwan, in which is full of these poems. And they said, and all of you, even if you don't know Arabic, you should get you a copy. And you should keep it with you everywhere you go. Our teachers told us, the one who has the diwan of Imam al-Haddad, where this poem comes from, it is the 27th poem under the letter Ra. Whoever has this, they will never have a worry. Not in their selves, not in their property, not in their children, not in anything. It is a protection. The favor that Allah is allowing us to connect to this great wali of Allah and to love him because mentioning him and, and being guided to him is a, is a sign that Allah loves you. Because he's bringing you to those whom he love. That's a sign of Allah's love. And a little for them, from them, is not a little, it's a lot. Even a little. Even if it's one word. Even if it's one breath. When we receive these words through our teachers, it's exchange not only of letters and forms, but meanings and breaths and realities and gazes from righteous people, from righteous people, from righteous people, from righteous people to the most righteous of the righteous, Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And all of those meanings are connected with it. I want to keep reminding us as we go through it to keep lofty aspirations. And even if you yourself are not lofty, by them, by connecting them, by having an attachment, a ta'alluq bihim, having that attachment to them is sufficient as a visa to get to your place of arrival. It's sufficient. But you have to have that kind of conviction. And you have to have patience and fortitude and steadfastness just in the conviction. As Imam Junaid رضي الله تعالى عنه said التصديق بعلمنا هذا ولاية just being convinced of this knowledge of ours itself is the saint is a state of sainthood just that the conviction right it opens doors the doors of the heart which opens the doors of the firm intentions and resolve, which opens the doors of actions and states, would ultimately open the door of ma'rifa, realization. Here, if you get nothing, and you should get a lot, out of this camp, except to realize that we have lofty objectives that we're striving for. And they're open for each and every one of us within our capacity. 
if we just have a strong resolve, right? So you would reflect over that. So you're going to have help against yourself. That's one. The other a dunya, this world. Because sometimes the world overwhelms us. So, by having steadfastness, and we can now just use the word sabr by now. Can we all say sabr? Having sabr is going to help us in the dunya. Many people lose and are trapped by the dunya and it's Alluring nature because they lack sabr. And part of sabr in relation to overcoming the traps of the dunya is to have al qana'a, to have contentment. And remember, we said a sabr is a way to get among this ranks of a taqwa, darajat al taqwa. Those ranks is through sabr. And the scholars, they mention a sabr, I mean a taqwa, and they said a taqwa is four things in reality. Al-imanu bil-jaleel, al-amalu bil-tanzeel, al-qana'atu bil-qaleel, wal-istiddal li rahil What is it? A taqwa, piety, is first to have unshakable faith in al-jaleel allahu tabarak wa ta'ala the majestic to act to practice according to the revelation so it's not just iman without amal it's iman and amal which is going to lead to a hal this is going to lead to a state iman practice Al-amalu bil-tanzeel. Wal-qana'atu bil-qaleel. And to be content with little. And you need patience to be content. It's, it's, it's a beautiful soldier. Content with what? A little. A little of what? A little sleep. A little bit of mixing with creation. A little bit of food and a little bit of speech. Have a little. And as you decrease, your patience will increase. Your sabr will increase. So it's work. Cut down, cut down, cut down, cut down, elevate. You're taking a little from the world to get an abundance in the hereafter. وَالْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ وَأَبْقَى The hereafter is better and it doesn't come to an end. Don't trade that which is faniya for that which is baqiya. This world is going to come to an end. It's going away every day. It's perishing. Sayyiduna Ali he said something so beautiful as Imam al-Bukhari related in his Sahih in the book Kitab al riqaq the book of words that soften the heart. Kitab al riqaq He said that this world is traveling. It's on a journey. Wahia mudbira, and it has its back to you. It's going away from you. The world is moving. Every day we live, the world is going away. Start looking at the dunya like that. It's going away from you. He said, and the hereafter is also traveling. Wahia mukbila, but it's coming towards you. It's facing you. The dunya coming to an end, going away from you. The akira never ending and coming to you. Think of that. Put yourself in that position. You're in there, 
looking at two abodes. Darul Fana and Darul Baqa. Allahu Akbar. This abode that is perishing, going away, and this abode that is everlasting, never going to come to an end. And the ultimate victory in that abode is the Ridwan of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, Allah's acceptance and pleasure. It's worth striving for. It's worth being steadfast till we reach that objective. So that is the world. That's how we're going to overcome it. Al Khalq, the creation. People, things, have some time alone with yourself. And you're never alone with yourself. Remember the Quran. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala told us in the Quran and to me this verse in terms of realizing our position in existence is the reality that we should really think about. وَهُوَ مَعَكُمْ أَيْنَ مَا كُنْتُمْ وَهُوَ مَعَكُمْ أَيْنَ مَا كُنْتُمْ Allah is with you wherever you are. You're never alone. The only way you are alone if you're in a state of ghafla, heedlessness. But if you are in a state of al-hudur, ma'allahi tabaraka wa ta'ala, you always have the best of companions. And when you get used to that, even when you're in a large assembly, you are still alone with your Lord. That requires sabr to you reach that. That means you're with us, but you're never not with Allah. And in other words, in every time you're in the company of others, you uphold the commandments and the limits of Allah wa ta'ala because you have reached the state of ihsan in your relationship with Allah. Excellence. And what is that? And ta'bud Allah ka anna ka tarahu fa in lam takun tarahu fa inna hu yarak. That you worship Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala as though you see him. And knowing you do not see him, Rabbi ma'i, my Lord is with me. There is not even a moment, a blinking of an eye, except that I am aware. I am in the presence of my Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So even when I'm in the state of khalwa, even when I have this solitude, I'm in the state of ma'iyah. I am with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's how we have to build ourselves up. So we're talking about making this practical. Because Imam al-Haddad, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was a man who never missed a moment with Allah. And he was patient in that. You know why he could do a hundred raka? Because he was with his Lord. The reality of the prayer never left him because at every moment there was some kind of dealing to be with his Lord. And Imam al-Haddad gave us a gift. He said, that Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, since he knew about the state of boredom in the servant, we get bored. He said he created multiple aspects of worship so that every moment, even if you change, you are always with your Lord. Because that's needed for you to get the ultimate victory, right? So you're going to get a opening a relief that is near. So as you're going to get support with patience and 
And every moment of difficulty, every moment of trial, every moment of tribulation, every moment in test, there is a relief that is very close. This is important because they're all connected. That if you have sabr, Every time you come through a difficult moment, you're going to get the support from Allah, which is going to lead to relief. That is nigh, very close. Just keep knocking the door of patience, of sabr, of steadfastness. Our teacher said, Stick, stay steadfast to knocking the door of Allah. Constantly, all the time, never stop. Here's sabr. He said, for the moment you stop knocking, the next knock was the faraj, was the relief, was the fat, was the opening. The next knock. Had you just knocked one more time, there was the opening. So in every act, in every state, in every station, you're going to need steadfastness. And you're going to need to keep knocking the door until it opens. And listen, when the door opens, the zafr, when you get this triumph, when you get this victory, it would be as if you never were tested at all. Allahu <laughs> Akbar. It would be like you were never tested at all. In other words, say to yourself from the worldly point of view, one day we're all going to laugh at this. In the hereafter, you get that victory, you'll be looking and smiling and laughing in a state of joy because you are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here's your challenge. Don't wait for the akira. Have it now. Have it now. Right now. The awliya, they said, those righteous servants, Whoever does not taste Jannah in this world will not get the reality taste in the hereafter. In other words, it's available. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. It's available. One of the students of the students of the students of the students of Imam al-Haddad. His name was Al-Habib Abdullah bin Hussein bin Tahir. So he is the student of Al-Habib Umar ibn Saqaf al-Saqaf, who is the student of Al-Habib Saqaf bin Muhammad al-Saqaf, who is the student of Habib Ahmed bin Zayn al-Habashi, who is the student of Imam Abdullah bin Alawi al-Haddad. All of these were Arifuna billah, knowers of Allah, one from one from one from one. And they had this high status of wilaya. They were like a pole of access in their time. The leader of the awliya, one, 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 one. He said his students, so they got this beautiful being in the company and they got triumph in that company. They said, imagine what that's like. They said, we didn't realize we were in this world until the death of Habib Abdullah bin Hussein. Because when we were in his sohba, we were in his majlis, we thought we were in Jannah. And all of them inherited that from the likes of Imam al-Haddad, who, who inherited that from his fathers and his forefathers to the Sayyidina Rasulullah, his grandfather. That feeling. But how did they do it? They filled up their time with acts of worship 
through steadfastness. Then Imam al-Haddad continued, he said, Nala saburu bi sabrihi ma yartaji wa saffat lahu al-awqat min ba'd al-qadr. Look at the change. He said, first sabir, one who has steadfastness. Then he said, as-sabur. That's one who is excessively steadfast, intense. In other words, this one took fortitude and steadfastness to a level of being intentional about it. It's not just he's striving, it is his state. Nala Saburu Bi Sabrihi. By his steadfastness, such a person will reach everything he hopes for. Everything he sets out for, he will get it. So now he's intentional about it. Now sabr becomes his badge of honor. Allahu Akbar. It's a dominant trait in him to the point he's at the level of it's part of him. It goes, how they say, without saying. Right? And now all would look difficult became easy. So that's why you get 100 raka. Praying in every mass, fasting, reading books that benefit you, sinning in the righteous. All of those things become easy for that person. It becomes a joy. There is no work. It is all pleasure. Through the patience, through the steadfastness. And the stations, the states rather, in every time, become purified for that person. So all of the time, the state in each moment is a state of purity. You know we say, Kefahalu, how is your state? The person like that, every state, at every time is a state of purity. Joy, relaxation, comfort, Tuma'nina, tranquility at every single moment. That means that heart is constantly relaxed through the remembrance of Allah. Through reflecting, through a dhikr and al fikr, it's a relaxation of the heart. And the state of that person becomes pure. And there is no Filth, no hardship and difficulty, trying moments, confusion. It's just pure, clean, flowing water. No filth in it. It's been removed. Through what? Through being extensively or exceedingly patient, steadfast, eyes on the prize all the time, heart on the prize all the time, soul on the prize all the time, innermost secret on the prize all the time. In other words, your entire being is always focused on Allah all the time. And you work hard with yourself with that. Then he comes back. That's given us the fruit of what we need to do. That's showing us the status of what we need to do. Then Imam Haddad comes and tells us again another command. Fasbir. Remain steadfast. 
على مهن القواسد وانتظر فرجا تدور به ديوال القدر now you got all the good news right go back to the root كمان be steadfast when the trials that come after you that seek you out there's going to be difficulties that's especially for you forget someone else they're directed at you when that happens don't shake when you're tested fasbir be steadfast you see the reward of the one who is steadfast you see the ranks you see the lofty status you have the examples now it's your time to be tested and you need to know something that the divine decree that Allah decreed everything some of those things are directly going to affect you they're specifically seeking you out when that occurs don't say woe is me fasbir be steadfast and every single one of us has a unique trial that is only for you that the other one even if he has something similar is not like you because it's your test and when you get your test this is Allah's gift to you by way of that test if you have steadfastness but you have to pass the test so the tool you need because the rotation of trials and the decree that brings those trials you're going to get your turn everybody gets a turn when is your turn alayka bi sabr be steadfast and remember that the trial the calamity the hardship the difficulty has not come to destroy you in reality for the one who is sabur even the one who is sabir those trials are gifts of elevation from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you know the sign the most afflicted with trials and tests are the prophets alayhim as-salatu was-salam no one gets more trials than prophets and then those who are similar to them in rank that follow them in rank and those who follow them in rank so all of those righteous people they get their mihna they get their trial they get their time but in that time they are steadfast like sayyidul imam ahmad ibn hanbal radiyallahu ta'ala anhu during that trial he got for the create about the quran being created from al mu'tazila and during the trial he was whipped to the extent they said if an elephant was whipped like that the elephant would collapse Subhanallah. Fasbir. Ya sabiran abshir. Be patient. Be steadfast and receive glad tidings. He was in prison. He was whipped. And they came to him. They said, "Ya Imam, why don't you just find a way out so they can stop?" Look at his maqam, his station, the station of sabr. He said, "If the scholar remains silent in the face of falsehood, when is the truth going to manifest?" That was his station. And from that station, he became known as Imam Ahl Sunnah wal Jamaah. From being what? Sabur.
exceedingly patient, steadfast, in the face of trials. So we're going to get our trial. May Allah not afflict us with more than we are bearing, able to bear. However, we don't run from the trial. Because the trial is an elevation for the one who is steadfast in it. Sometimes your trial is your job. Every time I hear someone, they come to me, they say, I hate my job. I say, don't hate your Lord. I hate my job. Don't hate your Lord. Because that trial for you is a gift. In reality, if you are in a state of steadfastness. Because through it, you're going to own your risk, lawful risk. Through it, you're going to spend in the path of Allah. Through it, you're going to eat and drink and gain energy to do the very purpose you were created. I only created the jinn and the humans to order them with my worship. Do your job, you're getting to do that. So don't hate it. Say Alhamdulillah. And you should think about it because some people, their trial is not having a job. Yours is having one, theirs is not having one. It's a trial for both. But maybe you would have passed this one, but this one is difficult. So Allah gave you the difficult one to lift you up because he loves you. Subhanallah. When we look at things from this light, it's all easy. Then Imam al Haddad continued. He said, Wa ida al Hawadithu adlamat wa tanakkarat thaskun wa iyaka taharruk wal hadar. These are some powerful words. <laughs> like, amazing. Translation doesn't do justice. The meanings you gotta grab. Imam Haddad is ajib in his expressions. That's cash. That's Allah unveiling for him and just pouring it out. Al Hawadith are created events. Look at what he called them, al-hawadith. Al-hawadith are things, events, that come from a state of non-existence into a state of existence, and by their very nature, they're going to go out of existence. That's a relief in knowing what that is. All of us are hawadith. We're events. As Habib Abdullah bin Hussein mentioned, he said, وَهُوَ الْقَدِيمُ وَمَا سِوَاهُ hadith." That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the al-qadim, the one who has no beginning to his existence, and everything other than him is hadith. It's a created event. So the hawadith are the events. Some of those hawadith are people. Some of them are just calamities. Some of them is wealth. Some of them is property. Some of them is sickness. Some of them is health. So many things. Hawadith. They are hawadith. The Prophet told us, Can Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Can Allah, wa lam yakun shay'un ghayru. Allah existed, there was nothing else. No hawadith. So when the hawadith, change and they become dark or worse and they overshadow you and they become harsh and difficult Faskun, remain tranquil <laughs> when it happens just be in a state of sakina wow in the midst of the storm don't shake just remember since they are Hawadith, he's Al-Khaliq, he's Al-Mudabbir. 
He's the creator. He's the one who managing all these hawadith. With him, they can do you no harm. Faskun. Just be relaxed, tranquil. And that's a state. A state of tranquility. Even in the midst of darkness and difficulties and things you dislike, be tranquil. When the whole world is going crazy, don't lose your, don't lose your sanity. When everything is moving and shaking, and remain still. Until the command of Allah comes for relief. And it's since these are hawadith, you know for sure they're not going to last. They're not going to last. It doesn't matter. No matter how difficult they may be, how they may overshadow everything else, everything else, man, it's, oh, I can't take it. No, it's going to go away. It's, these are hawadith. They don't come from the state of al qidam They come from the state of Hudud. That means there is a fa'il, there is a doer who brought them from non-existence into existence and he's going to remove them as well. They're not everlasting. And in time, they're like the blinking of an eye. Ponder your aqidah and you'll see this point. The Prophet wasallam told us that our life in this world is roughly 60 to 70 years. That's the average lifespan of his ummah. Right? Some going to die younger, some going to be older, but between 60 and 70 years, that's the average. The day of judgment is 50,000 years when we count. So what is this life, really? 50,000 years of what we count. 50 stages, each stage 1,000 years. None of us live a thousand years. So really, if the hawadith that occurs, these events, these difficult, if they last a whole lifetime, they're nothing to compare to everlasting felicity. That's just on the day of judgment. What about in the hereafter? What about the joy in the grave, if we're patient with these events and we are steadfast in them, we, can, we fulfill the command of Allah and we get the joy in this world, in the grave, on the day of judgment, and ultimately in Jannah. What is the, what did we really bear? Is it a lot? That's why Imam Hadad said, Faskun, be tranquil. When you see the reality, and that's why we started with Iman, Yaqeen, certainty. Wa'bud rabbaka hatta ya'tika al-yatkeen. Worship your Lord until certainty comes. That's death, right? But it's a reality. And everything that comes with death is going to a point that doesn't end for the believer. So, Anything you dealt with among these events is a brief moment. That's why some of the righteous, they said, Adunya sa'a faj'alaha ta'a. Faj'alaha ta'a. This world's a brief moment. Make it a moment of obedience. Sa'a, quick, gone. All the hawadif, everything you were stressing about, gone. Think about some of the most difficult times in your life, they're going to look different for everybody. But for a moment, reflect on it. When it passes, it's just a memory. Sometimes you forget about it all together. All the hawadith are like that. So no matter what it comes, just be tranquil with Allah. You're not by yourself. If you think by yourself, maybe you will get stressed. But if you realize that at every moment I am present with my Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is with me, I am with him, and these hawadith will pass. These events are going to go away. Of course.
So don't move. What 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 means don't move? From your side. Only move by the command of Allah. Only move in obedience. Don't panic and try to do your own thing. And that's what is meant by stepping out of line. This is not your affair. The affair belongs to who? Allah. Fa'alun lima yurid. And he does whatever he wants. And you should say as Imam Haddad say, Kad kafani ilmu rabbi. Sufficient for me is my Lord's knowledge of my state. He knows about me. That's good enough. Now I'm going to be content and I'm going to remain still in that. I'm not going to try to do my own thing. He will take care of it. Through me or without me at all. So I don't move on my own. So be aware of that. Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani, he said this about people. He said in his book, Futuhul Ghaib, the openings of the unseen. He said that a person, whenever they want to accomplish something, somehow if is occurring and they want to get out, they want to accomplish something, they try to do it themselves. I can do it. And when they prove unable, incapable, they go to the creation. They seek help of someone else. Can you help me with this? And then finally, when the creation fails them, they go back to Allah. Oh, Allah, help me. He said, the knowers of Allah, these people who are steadfast, their first result is Allah. They don't go to others, nor do they go to themselves. They go to the real doer, the creator, the bestower, the, the one who benefits us truly, the one who really gives. Allahu tabaraka wa ta'ala. They don't move on their own. They only move by the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when they're excellent in that, by the command of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Subhanallah. Then he goes on to emphasize these points. He said, Inna nawaiba. كالسهائب تنجلي في في سرعة ووجودها يضي خبر. Those things they're gonna go away just like clouds, storm clouds. They go. They just move. Look at the clouds, and you see it come. They come, pass over, gone. Especially when it's raining hard. It looks like it's going to bring a calamity, but it moves. Fastly, quickly. And when you think about that, it's just qabr, just something that's mentioned of the past event, a story. All of it, stories of the ancients. Because the one who is present with Allah, that becomes his true story. Even in the face of the calamity, I was with my Lord. I didn't even notice the storm. Allahu Akbar. Isn't that the case? Think of Sayyidina Ibrahim. Sallallahu alayhi wa He was catapulted by Nimrud in the fire. You know they catapulted him in. And they said about that fire, it was so huge, so enormous, that if a fast flying bird flew over it, it would disintegrate. That's heat. He's thrown in there. Allah sends an angel to him. Do you have a need? Of course, he's going to move, you would think. He's in the fire, this hot fire. And what does he say? From you? No. Has to be Allah and Nimal Wakil. My Lord is sufficient and the best of protectors. And the fire was tranquil and cool to Sayyidina Ibrahim. In that 
in that calamity, he was steadfast. He remained still. And Allah gave him relief after apparent fear. But for him, they have no fear nor no grief. Allah, this poem, subhanAllah, وَإِذَا تَطُولُ الْإِقَامَةُ مِنْ هَادِثٍ كَانَتْ مُبَشِّرَةً بِتُولِ المنتظر مُنْتَذِرٍ منتظر منتظر whenever these events they remain and in your mind the length is so long it seems like it's going to be forever actually it's a sign glad tidings from your Lord that are manifest on the horizon. They can be witnessed. For the one who has what? Basira. He sees with the heart, not with the eyes. The one who sees with the heart, not with the eyes, in the calamity will see the glad tidings. Ibn Asakir, he said, oftentimes, in the presence of calamities are downpourings of Allah's mercy that are unseen. <laughs> In the midst of the shada'id, the masa'ib, in these calamities are rahamat, mercies, divine mercies pouring down on you that you don't see. They are the glad tidings. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that the patient people they should receive glad tidings. Subhanallah. Glad tidings. So always look For the glad, we only, I, I covered six lines. I'm going to stop here. You, this poem needs reflection over and over. And the more you reflect and you put it in your life and watch and think about things, it's going to unpack. And you'll find meanings that you, subhanAllah. And it is, it is a secret in it. The speech of Imam Haddad, it's on the hearts, summarized, but it's unveiled from the unseen. He's working on us. Be a good patient. Remain still. Be steadfast with the operation. He's working on our hearts. We are just vessels for meanings to pass through. They don't come from us. They pass through us. And hopefully we are good conveyors. And hopefully we are good conveyors. Right? Hopefully. But actually, you can become your own vessel through reflection, through pondering, and through actually having Steadfastness, having sabr. Allahu Akbar. We love Imam Haddad, right? Yes, sir. If we really love him, let's implement his words in our life. Let's become an embodiment of what he's given us. The small Lines, but powerful in meaning and enriching in your life. You should go back home with a whole new look on your life. 
in every aspect remain still. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Barakallahu fikum wa jazakum allahu khaira. So the question was the sisters, they had a lovely gathering with our beloved sister Sabria on this poem. And one of the questions came or statements that when I read this poem, I listen to this poem, it is as if you're asking me not to be human. Is that true? I'm not saying who said it. Did y'all hear it? No? Y'all heard that? Sabria, what was the words? Okay, it's close. True but not true. True but not true. We're asking you, and Imam Haddad is asking us to aim high. We say about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Huwa basharun la kal bashar. Huwa basharun, repeat. Huwa basharun la kal bashar. He's a human being, but not like other human beings. So, no, we're not saying don't be human, but don't be like other humans. Be exalted humans. Most of the people we see I don't know if y'all caught Imam, uh, I mean, Sheikh Abdul Karim this morning. Please don't miss these sessions. They're very important. Because every session ties into the one before it and after it. It's like, you know. He said that we have this level of angels and we have this level of animals. The angels don't need this, nor do the animals. It is the human beings. Right? The animals, they are just into their inclinations. My desires, my passion. They see food, eat. They see enemy, strike. You follow? That's their inclination. The angels on the other scale, all obedience. They don't disobey Allah, rather they do what they're commanded. You as a human, you are in between these states. You have the ability to go so low in your states that you become like the animals even more astray. So what is being asked? Don't be an animal. The attribute of al-bashariyya in you is a sharaf. That Allah made you a human being? That's an honor. Don't drop your status to an animal. So the Prophet ﷺ gave us advice. Someone gets angry. We're humans. La taqdab. Does that mean you don't become angry? It means control your anger. What are you going to need to control your anger? He mentioned it. Al-hilm. Sabr and hilm. We talked about al hilm this morning. Anyone know what he said this morning, what Al-Hilm is? Yes, what is it called in English? A loose translation. Forbearance. Forbearance. Write this down. This will help you, and humans have to do it. You have to have some sabr, we mentioned. So I should mention quickly. Sabr is steadfastness 
in performing what Allah ordered you with. That's one. Number two, steadfastness in free refraining from what Allah prohibited you. Right? As sabru ala ta'atillah, as sabru an ma'siyatillah. Right? One, two. The third aspect is patience, sabr, steadfastness in what you dislike. When your desires are checked and you dislike it, steadfastness there. Right? Al-hilm, forbearance on the other side, is addition to that. Number one is to endure the harm from others. To endure the harm from others. Number two, do not reciprocate that harm. This level's getting there. Number one, you got to endure the harm. Someone's talking bad to me, talking slick, did me wrong. I got to have the ability to endure that, to bear it, not to reciprocate it. I'm not going to return that. I'm going to return evil with good. And then this third one is really a level. To wish good for the one who harmed you. To wish good for the one who harmed you. What is the ultimate good? Guidance. That's the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, it's human. But all of these tools are needed to elevate you from the level of al-baha'im, from animal, beastology. Beastology. How do you say that? We don't want to go that low. Right? right? No. And when you can't control your passions, you are like an animal. In Imam al-Ghazali, in the Ihya, he mentions different passions in animals that they are synonymous with. We are humans. We created you fi ahsan al the best of mode. Don't go to asfal al-safilin. Right? So there is a secret. Imam Haddad is my favorite two words of Imam Haddad. Everyone knows them by now, right? What is it? Why do you say it like you're shy? Jahid to shahid. All of these things require work. But if you work, if you struggle, you're going to witness the results and the fruits. And that result is glad tidings from Allah. Right? You, you have to you have to aim high. Don't be like everyone else. Everyone else is going crazy right now, right? They're worrying about politics. They're worrying about this. They're worrying about this. Is Trump going to be in office? This, 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 this. The believer. The believer. Why? Allah. Yahkumu bi kalkihi bi ma'ayasha. He rules by way of his creation however he wills. No one has power except Allah. Inna Allah ala kulli shay'in qadir. Jami'u al-qala'iki makhuruna bi kudratihi. All of the creation subjugated by the power of Allah. When you know that, these are hawadith. They're going to come and go. We forgot about Trump, right? When he went out, he thought going in cuffs. That was it. That was done with that. And they gave us Biden. <laughs> but it's going to go away. None of this stuff. No matter what happened. They're going to go away. And we're going to our Lord. And he's going to guide us. All of these hawadith. All of them. Gone. Kullu shay'in halikun illa wajha. Everything's going to perish, go away, be ruined, except Allah. That's it. 
the rest of this stuff, it's going to be khabar. Just old news. Not going to be mentioned. You imagine in Jannah, you're going to be thinking about any of this stuff? No one. Well, be in Jannah now and stop thinking about this stuff. Barakallahu <laughs> Where's Nadir Allahu Akbar. What's yeah, next? Short you want to do? The short, your shortest one. This one? Okay. I'm not going to do that to you. I'm not going to do that to you. I'm going to sell you out. Oh, I can't. This one. اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله صل يا سلام على الوسيلة وشمس العنام طلعت ليلى صل صل يا سلام على الوسيلة وشمس العنام طلعت ليلى يا ساكل الشاك عمل الكعوسة من خمر العدواك يحيي النفوس هدرات الاتلاك عبدة شموسة ما حتي رواك عن وجه ليلى صلي صلي يا سلام على الوسيلة وشمس العنام طلعت ليلى مبتغى الأشاك حين تجلى تجلى في ذات الخلاك المولى جلى من بحر العتلاك حين تجلى بكل رونك جمال ليلى صلي صلي يا سلام على الوسيلة وشمس العنام طلعت ليلى صاحت الاتيار فوق المناب منابر وفاح الازهار والروض عطير والنات العتار والحب حاضير غني يا خمار بحسن ليلى صلي صلي يا سلام على الوسيلة وشمس العنام طلعت ليلى يا عين العيون دحرات الجهراء بجمع الفنون كسا وخمرا زالت السجود طابت الهدرا بسر المكنون من كنز ليلى صلي صلي يا سلام على الوسيلة وشمس العنام طلعت ليلى ابن يا العسام لا ما سوقيا من خمر العدواق فاني باقيا عليك السلام خير الباريا ما سكي المدام في حي ليلى صلي صلي يا سلام على الوسيلة وشمس العنام طلعت ليلى صلي صلي يا سلام على الوسيلة 
وشمس العنام طلعت ليلى اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله